Also wondering when there will be change and better days, especially when it comes to our education system. When you take a trip to the nation's every towns, right now as we speak, it's the same situation. It's the same story, the same song. And when are we going to get it right when it comes to university education in Nigeria? Well, some universities, uh, like uh, chief among them, University of Ilori, has decided to be, what you call it now, is it a black sheep or the good boy and the family are not joining in the strike. But as it is, the majority of institutions, universities across the country, the length and breadth of this great country, Nigeria, are on total lockdown, on shutdown. Not only because of the strike embarked upon by the academic staff union of universities, ASU, but also uh, by the Joint Action Committee of the Senior Staff Association of Nigerian Universities, that's the SANU, and of course the Non Academic Staff Union of Universities, NASU, and the National Association of Academic Technologies, NAT, who also announced their own strike last week, Wednesday. And that uh, strike was embarked upon or kicked off officially. Uh, Monday, 11th of uh, September. Well, Sam Senugokwe, the president of SANU, when announcing that strike, said that uh, there shall be no provision of service whatsoever, no matter how skeletal, although concessions uh, would not be granted uh, for members to stay at home unless as elected uh, by JAG through their respective. Uh, President. What exactly is the bone of contention? It is still about the alleged refusal of the federal government to uh, implement the 2009 agreement or renegotiate the 2009 agreement. There are meetings ongoing between the federal government and, of course, some of these uh, unions. But one particular issue that we want to look at this morning, or one option out of all this. Uh, Agamario, is the fact that some people, some scholars, some eminent personalities in Nigeria have uh, preferred some way out, or let's say some ways out of this uh, quagmire. And uh, one particular one that strikes the chord out of this uh, solution, some ways out, is that uh, uh, <laughs> it is a very, 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 very strong one. And uh, it might be laughable to some people, but at the same time, some have said, I think we need to really look at it. Professor Ole Shoenka is one of those who have actually said it, and it's that all these universities should be shut down totally for at least a year so that this, the federal government will now come up with a workable curriculum, system, policy, or whatever it is that you're going to call it this time around, to reposition, rejig, and resuscitate university education. And that is why that option may be had, <laughs> and of course, laughable. Is it possible that we shut down the entire universities in the country so that we can get it right? And then we open it after one year. Well, we have had, uh, many had actually, one. yeah, many, many actually said that Ghana did the same, and well, it's working for them or it worked for them. Mm. And uh, when I was in um, the high institution, I experienced that a bit, all right, and that was after my first year. Uh, we were supposed to go home for three months, but the school authorities came, to, uh, authorities came up, and they said that it would be advisable that we should go home for seven months instead so that they would be able to work on the school calendar mm -hmm. and then we could go back, you know, to the September, October resumption date. That was a hit anyway. But then after that session, okay, we came back seven months after and after the session, we had to go home again for six months and the calendar changed again. And then another one year, the calendar changed again. Another five or seven months, the calendar kept and you kept changing. All right, maybe this could be a solution if it's a general one, or maybe not. But in the course of this, we'll get to know. All right, but it's a known fact 
that education, no doubt, is the bedrock of growth and development of any nation. And it shouldn't be, you know, treated uh, or exactly. toyed around with or treated with a kid's glove. It must be taken seriously and the sector cannot but be looked at. Our primary schools are suffering, our secondary schools are suffering down to the tertiary institutions. So what then are we talking about here? If the shutdown will be the solution, hmm. maybe not. That is a question this morning. The University Education ASSO strike or union strike as it were now, because not only ASSO, unions strike is shut down an option. Should we look at it? Uh, don't forget that this is one thing that the former president, Abdullah uh, Jonathan, tried to do uh, in the sports sector, especially football, where he actually wanted to disband <laughs> the teams. And there was some kind of a abysmal performance on the part of the Super Eagles. And of course, uh, and then it created an opera uh, because uh, he believed then that, well, I think that is what we need to do. Let us uh, s stop going to all tournaments. Let us rejig the teams. Let us reposition our sports. Let us reposition our football, and then we can launch back. But it was not to be. <laughs> we raised the FIFA sanctions and all. And so that particular decision was reversed. But can we look at that once again in the education sector this time around? Is it a way forward? That is what we'll be looking at this morning on the Citizens Forum uh, segment of the Debate Show. Well, we have someone very qualified to look at this issue with us this morning. We have in the studio Chief Doctor Nathaniel Onatunji Shotoimo the first registrar of uh, the then Ogo State University, also in Ogo State, now known and called Onabisi Onobanjo University at Goiwe, Ogo State. Dr. Sushoimo, you're welcome to the direction once again. Thank you very much, Toby. Well, um, a lot has been said already, uh, but I'm sure Dr. Sushoimo, you yourself must be tired about this back and forth movement or motion about strikes, about agreements and disagreements, negotiations, renegotiations between the federal government and the unions. What's your take? Thank you very much, Toby. Um, when the layer you do spoke with me and said, uh, because our election car was quoted, as saying that uh, this perennial industrial crisis that we've been witnessing the university and that appear as if they're not going to go away, he suggested maybe a shutdown of the university system for a year, uh, with the hope that some sanity will be brought. And I'm glad that in your intro, uh, you did say that it happened before in a neighboring country. And that's not the first time. It, it has happened in some other parts of the world. If you ask me, I would say it's an option. And I will tell you that uh, it's not only Professor Shoinka that expressed such concern. As far back as 2001, Emeritus Professor of History um, distinguished scholar, former Vice Chancellor of the University of Lagos, Professor G. F. Fadi Ajayi, now of blessed memory. In a paper he wrote in 2001, lamented over the protracted uh, industrial crisis in the university system, the combative and hostile uh, conflicts between the various unions. ASU, uh, SANO, um, NASU, and NAFT, or whatever you call the, the, the other group, amongst themselves and between themselves and government. Um, he, I also, uh, in 2002, had course in a lecture I gave to, on the invitation of NASU of Ohio State University, to express similar um feeling about the need for us to reduce all this industrial crisis and if you look at um what has been happening 
um, you hear of there's an agreement of uh, 1992 not implemented, an agreement of 2009 not implemented, an agreement of 2013 not implemented. If you look at all of this, then one, you are bound to ask, could all these governments that entered into these various agreements, could they have been that daft? Could they have been that irresponsible not to have implemented the various agreements? And I will tell you from experience that most of these agreements, uh, governments were stampeded into signing them. When industrial crisis, when negotiations went on and on and on and on. Look, I have always um, maintained that in labor laws, there is a provision about ability to pay. So if you get, I mean, if, if you have a union and a government negotiating and the government say, look, this is the limit of our um, ability. This is how far we can go. Then I expect the union to say, okay, fine. Well, please implement that. If that is done, we expect a responsible government to implement that. And by the time that government says, this is how far I can go, I expect a responsible union to say, okay, but I'm sorry, I have experienced a situation where governments, uh, which are the, uh, the, the funding agencies, I mean the funding authorities of the industry say, this is how I go, and you don't say no, you have to do this. And when that happens, sometimes governments are stampeded, it's okay, look, all right, we'll sign the agreement. Agreement they didn't know, they have no wherewithal to implement. So I have reflected over the years and I found that that's one of the reasons why we have this and I can give you, I, I hope as we probably will go on, I will give you an instance. I mean, 19, 19, we are talking of 2009, I mean, this recent ones. Some of the most um, serious industrial crises took place in the university system between 1992 and 1994. That almost a whole year, I was neck deep in it, so I know what I'm talking about. So, um, but uh, the Yoruba say, Abok, where we work. Um, I think part of the problem has to do with the structure, the way we are running a federal structure as a unitary. It is very fundamental. Uh, I hope as we go on. Um, All right. We'll... Now, so you said that um, the federal government was stampeded into signing all this agreement. Okay, now, will it also be right to think that this demands were not reasonable enough or they're not still not they're still not reasonable of course union leaders always um ask for two things i i can give that to them one they want better facilities they want in the in the, the university system they want better funding and i can i can i can say with all honesty that uh, almost without exception, there is no, um, uh, there is not enough funding in all the institutions. And the unions are quick to say, look, there could be better funding if there is a, a less uh, um, flamboyant uh, um, funding of the, of, the, of, the, of the governments, if the overheads being expended now on political um, systems are reduced. I, I give that to them, particularly when you see some of the things now happening. But the point I'm making is, there's never a time that there will be no funds. And then you can all also not, um, Augustate workers, for instance, should not insist that the um, conditions of service that are prevalent in federal universities must um, uh, be totally applicable. I believe uh, it was last week also, uh, the vice president was also quoted as asking for deregulation. I think we need it. We will get there. And we will get there when we get our political structure 
right? There is need for devolution of power. Um, people will go and negotiate, and I, I, I'm telling you, in, 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 in 1992, the various unions went and negotiated with the federal government. They said, okay, look, these are the conditions, these are their various agreements. They came back, and the then governor of Ogun State said, look, I was not party to this. You cannot insist, you cannot make me um, uh, sign, I mean, implement an agreement I was not party to. And our union you know, leader said, no, we must have it. Now we had, the, the system was closed down completely. It took, we were lucky, because uh, the university then wanted to mark its 10th anniversary, organized a fundraising program, and uh, we worked on President Ibrahim Babangida, he came. Um, he was cajoled, he was prevailed upon, he promised, he pledged a, a donation of 25 million. And we did everything we could to procure that money. And I had to make five trips to Abuja to get that check. It was what we used to save part, I mean, the situation at that time. Because the university had closed up for about four months. Now, has, uh, sir, has there, ever, has there ever been any time in the history of um, our universities that strike or industrial strike has brought about the desired result? Mm, well, uh, yes and no. You see, striving is provided for in labor laws. What it is provided for is the last option. It's supposed to be the last option when all other um, the negotiations have failed. But I am sorry to say, I think most of our unions rush to strikes these days. Um, and, 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 and I have no apology to say that. Well, they, they, always, they always say that they've um, tried every option, dialogue, discussions, meetings, but none seems to have worked. That's what I said earlier. You see, when you when you negotiate there is this, when you negotiate you must be prepared to say look i'm the employer i would say this is all i've got and sometimes you can see it as workers that this is all i've got and you say this is what you want if what you want cannot be met within my resources then you've got to agree with me that what you want cannot be met look i've just given you an example i said that 25 million were able to procure, I mean, I mean, the largest Babangira gave us in We had planned to uh, invest it for future development of the university. But because workers insist at that time that they must have all the allowances, all the, I mean, the new salary structure approved at the national level, then we had to take a chunk of it to meet that immediate need. But that could not be sustained. I mean, I said, um, uh, Professor, let me, let me, let me call what Professor um, um, Ajay said in, uh, in, uh, in the paper that I referred to. Um, he said the, um, the polarization of the university to four armed and hostile unions, academic and, and uh, non-academic, senior non-academic, junior, and the students has destroyed the esprit de corps that used to be the integrity of the university uh, uh, system. When the vice chancellor, as a symbol of the integrity of the university, spoke on behalf of the institution and his opinion was expected by all. He further argued that the combative posture of the unions among themselves and against either the university authority or the government had destroyed the discipline among both staff and students with damaging consequences of the head of the institution. Look, if the unions agree that, I mean, all their negotiations must be within um, the ability to pay of the government, if the government say, this is how far we can go, I think you do not be prepared. And I'm, I'm saying that, but once that agreement is made, then it behoves the government to implement. But we find that and I, I, I sympathize with the unions in a way because when the unions sometimes see um, the way the politicians behave, and I mean, if, if all the, the, the terrible reports have been receiving about 
the, the high level corruption uh, and, and the looting that had, had gone on is anything to go by. Then sometimes when governments say, look, we haven't got enough money, the staff will say, look, what are you talking about? See what is happening. So there is a problem of uh, um, faith, of, of, of trust. There's a great deal of mistrust um, in the system. But I, I am saying, look, strike should be the last resort. And then the workers and the union leaders may not like this. Again, before you go on strike, if you agree, because there's also a provision in the, in the, the industrial laws that says for the period that you're on strike, no work, no pay. Okay. In those countries where they, 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 they um, adopt this system, their union leaders will have, maybe be from their deduction, they will have put some money aside that, okay, if you are going to go on strike and you know you are not going to get paid, they will give them token that will keep on. That does two things. One, it makes the employers anxious to resolve the crisis. Two, because the workers know that they are not going to get paid when they are on strike, then they will not the, the, want the, 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 the strike to be prolonged. But in our own system, whereby the union leaders will say, look, um, if we are on strike for a whole year, we must uh, get our, we'll come back. My, my son will used to tell me that we want to come and collect our money. Sometimes the money that was not available because they were not generated. So um, I am not saying that strike is not an essential part of industrial relations. But I'm saying that strike must be the last resort. It, we have, we, it has become too frequent. And sometimes you find ASU now, I mean, it's raising issue with government, and it is then that Sano will say, yes, we also remember that you didn't do this for us. And you, the whole system um, is, I mean, collapse. You, you said you learned, yes. You know, it's not black sheep, it's experience. It's not, I'm, 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 I'm told that even if it, has also that you that if he is also not on strike now. Now, Dr. Dremel, you mentioned something earlier which I think we need to really look at critically, uh, and that is the issue of um, the type of unity government you are practicing um, and uh, the lack of uh, federalism and why we need to devolve uh, powers, actually. When you talk about devolution of powers, mm -hmm. you are talking about devolving powers to the states. Uh, so that they will have more control and have more responsibilities as it were. As it is, many of these states are uh, crippled by financial burdens, <laughs> not only of workers on the payroll, but also retired workers mm -hmm. and so many responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So when we devolve powers, uh, when we devolve power and of course these responsibilities and then add more to the responsibilities of the state government, mm -hmm as regards university education, do you think that they will be able to cope? For example, Oklahoma State has the highest number of institutions in the country. How will you be able to cope if the federal if the federal institutions are added to the body? No, of the no, 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 don't, don't get me wrong. Don't okay. get me wrong. We are not saying that uh, when you talk of devolution, but that's not what is meant. Um, first, we are saying that the federal government is carrying too much. Too much. Mm -hmm. You see, and all that the military, what the government did was to aggregate all the resources in this area to the center and where it was easier to, to share. And I mean, but um, some of us uh, went to school in the colonial uh, era. In the, um, I started working on January 1, 1961, under the old Western region. when when we had the region, regional systems of government, when each of these regions was developing on its own, within its resources. Now, when we are talking of restructuring, we are saying, let us reduce the power at the center. Let us reduce all the resources 
I mean, let us let us and it's taken to the center. The, the center. So that there'll be the, more resources also at the yes, region. You know, if the states. federal government still mm -hmm. has, I mean, uh, federal universities, yes, we should of course run it. And if you ask me, I believe we have too many of such universities now. In the last uh, couple of years, the federal university went to some villages to establish some universities. The ones you have on the ground, yes, you have really. not. Mm. Look, I mean, I I, I love what. Uh, uh, Governor Amosu has been doing the state, but if you ask me, if you had asked for my vote on the issue of establishing another university, I would have said no. As a matter of fact, about when I had the information, I called the leader of the, one of the leaders of the, the, the state assembly. I said, I had you people, I consider, I said, you will come and see me, sir. You will come and see me. Within a week, he didn't come to see me. The next thing I had was that they have passed a law to establish another university. Um, I mean, with all with all sense of responsibility, and I respect the governor, and uh, but they may have more reasons uh, to do what they are doing than I have. But if you ask me, we didn't need the third university as at that time because I happen to know that the Olabisi Olabisi University that I was associated with from the beginning, at no state, no state had it enough funds. We had to do everything that you have to keep that decision going. And I know that the complaint was that government was not being able to release all the funds. And again, when the government said, look, the reason we can't release all the funds you have is that we have other responsibilities. So um, so it's not the issue of, uh, of whether the state will take over the federal university. That's not what we are saying. Um, if, for instance, there's devolution of power, of resources, the state will have more. Mm -hmm. The states will also be able to negotiate on their own. Because there can't be devolution of power, there's are devolution of uh, resources. Resources. Also. You see, you, you cannot... Uh, look, look, look like we, at the moment, the minimum wage in the country is 18,000 naira. I believe we understand, I understand that if not up to 50% of the states, cannot even afford to pay that. What stops a state uh, in, you know, in uh, the southwest that cannot pay to say, look, my workers, I cannot pay 18,000 naira. I can only pay 15,000 naira. But what stops? Is it better for you to be able to get the 15 naira, I mean 15,000 regularly than to insist on say, I must have 18? And then you don't get it. You don't get it. You are old uh, um, six months, one year. I mean, uh, uh, that's why I said. So you're in support of decentralization of the minimum wage. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Now, one issue that um, people have also accused the unions of is uh, misplaced priorities on the part of the unions. Many of them uh are accused of just negotiating allowances and allowances uh, academic allowances uh, so many allowances that uh, oftentimes form the fulcrum of uh, the agreements with the federal government uh, do you agree with this school of thought absolutely absolutely look um again i believe it was uh, yes 12th november 2002 um on the invitation of uh, the National Association of uh, Non-Academic Staff Union of Olabi Sonobai University, I gave them a lecture that I called that the child may prosper. Um, I lack in Ogo State University because, as I, as I said, a friend of mine has accused me often that uh, I always, anytime they talk of that university, I always be, behave as if it's my child. And I say, well, look, um, if, if, the, if the, 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 that, the university is like five years uh, old to the, I mean, old, about now, and uh, if I was involved with his, uh, his bar that five years ago, I should uh, take interest in whatever I'm going. And one of the things that I said there is that it is good for union leaders to um, work for the betterment of their, the welfare of their staff. Um, but it is equally important that the prosperity the survival, the well-being of the organization that they are working for must be protected. Sometimes um, you go to some of the offices today and see how workers work. 
and at the end of the month, you are saying, I must have the, we must have a pay. People that have not even given up their best. You know, what I did in the earlier part of, the, of, of my paper then was to identify certain work ethics that the workers should imbibe punctuality, transparency, honesty, integrity, resourcefulness. These are the things I said, if you imbibe all this, then the institutions will, uh, will, will you will generate more funds, um, you will uh, not steal um, some of the resources that are available. So, but I also had instances where um, sometimes you find uh, a worker that has stolen and you find union leaders coming to plead for him. Now that doesn't make sense. So I am saying that it's not often time, I, I must also give it to the unions that on several occasions they emphasize, yes, that uh, the institutions um, need government need to do this, to do that, to better the fortune of the institutions. They do, but they always pay more emphasis on their own well-being. The allowances, uh, uh, this allowance, that allowance, uh, and because they paid it in, uh, uh, in uh, the University of uh, Kotangora, then they must pay it here. Well, I, I, I don't, I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't agree with that kind of thing. Every um, uh, every state must be able to see. You know, Governor Shoba, the, 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 the 1992 story that I said, after we were able to pay the backlog from that money we got from Babangida, and then the monthly thing I went to Governor Shoba, I said, Look, there's no way I can, I can pay this. I don't have that kind of money. Look, um, that was in 1992. By October 1, 1993, I went on sabbatical. By the time I came back in, I mean, October 1, 1984, all the unions were again on strike. Now, that means the, because it was not so possible to sustain that temporary um, arrangement. All right, right, now, should the, if the federal government yes. okay, allowed itself to be stampeded to sign in such agreement, okay, how else do you think the federal government can go about salvage and salvaging this particular situation? Because it's becoming one too many, and it seems that's all we get to know now. Strike. How can the federal government salvage this? Well, um, I think it's the, the, the two sides. Or can there be the, a reversal um, of such agreement or of, the, of such signing? Well, yes. I mean, uh, in fairness to the union, you know, I believe uh, even in your intro. Um, I told the unions and say, okay, now let it negotiate. If uh, I am, I'm not a politician, and I hope all those who know me know that. But what I'm saying is, before government signs an agreement, it must insist on what it can uh, accept and what it can implement. But uh, as I've said, over the years, invariably, because um, of the combative nature, because they, they, when, 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 when uh, I mean, the system is short for months, and of course the public will continue to, to shout, I mean, to, to say, why is government allowing this? Well, then it's all right, now let's sign it. Something that you know cannot be sustained. So I'm saying, the workers, the labor unions, must limit their demands to what is feasible. They too must be prepared to make sacrifices. But having said that, the governments must shed, I mean, all those extra expenses on governance. This cannot be. It, 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 the idea of a uh, um, I don't know how government, I mean, uh, run, but the, 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 the system of, uh, uh, I mean, in a ministry where you have a commissioner or minister, you have special advisors on that same ministry, you have a special assistant to that special as uh, assistant, the special assistants have their own assistants. I mean, these overheads of political systems, because these are the things that the workers complain about to say, look, 
more money that you should have poured into the system is is a uh, is being wasted. Now, as well. Quickly before we go on a break for the national news, I don't know what you Let's assume we are we want to follow this advice mm. of total shutdown of the universities for at least a year. What would you advise that we put in place for the students? You should not even arise. You see, we should not allow it to happen. But I say it's a possibility it could happen. I mean, you, you just said it had happened in, in Ghana. It could put it to happen. Why it will not happen? Why should um, wh why we should not allow it to happen? It's because of the consequences for the students, for the parents. If the union leaders will be more realistic in their demands, if the governments then wants they have agreed to the basic minimum demands of government. Now do everything to implement it. Then we don't get to that kind of situation. But as I said, I, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I, I mean that when I said I, I'm, I'm not making a, an alibi for for the government. But I happen from experience to know that sometimes, look. Uh, um, Dr. Molayoli, a renowned uh, industrialist management expert, was the second pro chancellor I had. In uh, when we had some crisis, I believe 1993-94, he said the vice chancellor and I had not brought all the unions back. Look, what that's that? He then said he will come and join the management to negotiate. And he called a meeting, and we called our union leaders, and he said, "Look, I'm not chairman of council now. I'm a member of management." Tell us, how can we break this uh, strike? How can we do this? And my, I remember my the, the ASU chairman at that time looked them straight and said, I don't know what you are talking about. Our demands are there. No further negotiation. That's, and the man said, wait a minute. I have been in industrial uh, relations all my life. This is not how industrial relations is practiced. Look, let's, you must be. And the people said, no. Our demands, this is what our national ASU says, and this is what we want. So, of course, that kind of situation, the thing failed. So, the, if the unions will be more pragmatic, if they will be more realistic, if they will know that in the, in the, in the, the, the labor laws, there are provisions for ability to pay, and two, no work, no pay. Look. If the workers know that um, they are not going to get paid for the period they are on strike, they will not want to go on strike for a long time. All right, at this juncture, we would like to take a breather for the national news at 10. After the national news, we will be back. And Dr. Nathaniel on to issue table will still be here in the studio as our guest. In the meantime, you can start sending your messages, questions to 32120. Just type wrong, leave a space, type your message. Include your name and send it to the short code. Face and Joel said there, as we will also say, as no doubt about it. Business. And this is where we are, still on Rock City 101.9 FM, the Dobrik Show, Citizens Forum segment, and talking about education, especially the ASA strike that is ongoing, and all the unions of the universities on strike. And we still have very much with us in the studio, Chief Nathaniel Shotoibo, and he's still on this very matter with us. Yes, we have Chief Dr. Nathaniel Olatunji Shotoibo, first registrar of the State University, now on Navis Yeroban George University. Um, before we went on that break, uh, Dr. Shotoibo, we were talking about uh, the issue of uh, mysterious priorities of, of the unions, and of course, you have the opinion that no work no pay policy on the part of the government will put a stop to these incessant strikes are you still of the opinion that this will achieve the desired result if the federal government invokes this no work no pay rule well yes that will be i i see i said earlier that uh, i hope we do not get there mm. and how we will not get there? One, I think the governments uh, 
should be afraid of the public opinion that they will not uh, want to a system that will allow um, the universities to be shut up I mean, for a whole year. Because they would not want that, they will be prepared to meet reasonable demands of the unions. And I'm also saying that because the unions also will not want a situation that will deprive their workers of their earnings. So the earnings may not be up to what they want, but because they will not want them uh, to, to be denied of their earnings for that period, they will also um, accept um, reasonable uh, offers of government any time there is an agreement. I mean, and once there is, a, there is an agreement on such reasonable offers, then we are saying that because government, if they want to be responsible, we also not want to be seen as being responsible by not meeting such reasonable offers. So, um, but to the extent that, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm falling back on my experience. When uh, the, the crisis of the 90s that I was referring to, most of the staff went and, and uh, opened shops here and there. And uh, they will come for a meeting and then go back. To the extent that, in fact, when the strike was called off, in fact, some of them were shared, I mean, they, they, they were not regular at their work because they, they had some other things now they were doing. I am. I have no apology to. I mean, the the opinion I'm expressing. Um, I just pray that both sides will not allow because all it takes is a, a strong-willed leader, like you had in Ghana at the time they took that kind of decision, and it can be done, and it will bring some sanity into the system. All right. So at this juncture, we'd like to go through the various channels to keep a part of the discussion open. The first is the studio lines zero eight zero nine eight six eight seven three four four and zero nine zero nine one four six nine six seven zero. You can also reach us via the short code three two one two zero or you have to go to type rock R O C K level space type your message, include your name and send to three two one two zero. Good morning. Good morning, prof in the studio. My name is Doctor Uncom. I'm calling from my share Prof, before we start back the university, hmm. let us go a bit further because we have not gotten to an issue which is the pathology. Hmm. What is happening? I'll tell you, sir. Yes. In 1973, hmm. when you had the major industrial uh, crisis in the university, by the one switch, person who instigated that thing, it was Chief Aiken, who was then uh, the he used to call them commissioner. Mm. Who advised Gawan to deal with university lecturers? Mm. And this was a previous registrar. Mm. So, tell you number one. Let me tell you even this particular one. 30 years ago, we went to the industrial action in UCH battle. Mm. The Arab Health, now Minister of Health, and then I, we were involved in it. But the same statement he made to TFOS, this the, 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 the video is going viral now. It's what some of the boys. I say now, it's the same statement which the minister said 30 years ago, and he is now the minister. The question is that, why is it this transformation? What people going to government? What is this government? People say government, government, government. There is something wrong there which changes this. It's not the issue of negotiations and what have you What goes in there? Because once you know what is happening there, there will be in a position. Why is a person who will be head of NSC not pay all salaries in Bender State? And it was the man who said, oh, Shokole, oh, Shokole. What happens when you go to government? And I just say, even the people today who are fighting as well as when they become ministers in the future, is the same thing they will do. So what is the issue, sir? Before we start talking of having an answer, until we solve that problem, we are going nowhere. Why is it that? Why, why do we transform when we get to government? Right. 
All right, thank you. Kelly. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Mary. Good morning, Toby. Good morning, Chief. Good morning. Uh, my name is Olushola Johnson. Yes. Uh, I want to look at it this way. Don't you think that those that are working are not properly commiserated? I mean, all lecturers, doctors, nurses, including the police, are not properly paid as the work they are doing. Then they now sit down and reflect and see a, 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 a politician that the professor taught in the university now going to a lot will go salary and allowances to themselves, living a flamboyant life. Don't you think this also could be a major factor of persistent strike in this country? The fiscal policy of this nation, I think, is wrong. The fiscal commission is supposed to have fixed every wages and allowances, not allowing some people to take more than what other people are earning in this country. I think this could be a major factor. I don't know your position. What do you think about it? Good morning. All right, good morning. Hello. Hello. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Alkis Afolam Leko. I don't know when the government will have funds. I don't really know. Just about funds. This fund is our problem. Fund is not our problem in this country. So if funding is a problem, the federal government is bought some are you fund to pay to pay pension, to pay grants and everything, they don't pay. So you're telling me the fund is our problem. I think we have a particular problem, and that's caution and that's wickedness. You know that we don't have the fund. I don't this one is what are you talking about? If the university is going to be shut down, where's some idea? That is a very good idea. Let's shut it down. Shut down for us. I'm fine what they want to fight for. If you don't want to do the need to, they should know. And the people are against them, and they will put them out. You must bring to the reason. That's that's what we are talking about. You cannot personalize the, the education sector, personalize the health sector, personalize everything. I think this is something that you are here enjoying and doing everything. Some people cannot pay minimum wage of eighteen thousand naira. I don't know the problem. I think I don't know the problem because fund is not a problem. You know that we are not realistic. We are not serious. So if they are going to shut the investor, they will come again. What are we talking about? What this photo have shut it down for so long? So I don't even know that problem is happening. That we are not. Good morning. Good morning. Um, the various people that have called Big Daddy. Well, is it the government did not uh, agree to the 2016 um, agreement? That's why the strike is on again today. Well, uh, yes, because if the workers' uh, requests uh, have been met in 2016. Hopefully, there will not be strike uh, 2017. True federalism, um, desirable, yes, I believe I've emphasized that several times uh, in my presentation, um, saying that uh, uh, we had to uh, devolve powers, we have to uh, reduce uh, all the resources that have been concentrated uh, at the federal level. Uh, we are, sadly, one must say it's easier to access these funds and, uh, and, and, and dispose the funds so uh, um, wrongly as is evident from uh, some of the things that we are seeing. So I agree with you. I emphasize that. Dr. Nkong, the pathology of people in government. Well, I have never been in one and I know you haven't been either. Uh, but you may, I, I wasn't in government, um, I, I only serve just like you are serving now, but being at the level at which I served, I, I, I saw, I mean, I, I came in contact with certain um, information. When, the, when you are faced with the reality of the situation, your attitude will change. You, you refer to uh, Chief Eke in 1973. He said it was a university registrar, so that I'm expressing the opinion that I'm expressing today. Um, it's uh, because uh, uh, maybe I'm a registrar. This, the truth is, I, I mean, I know that uh, um, we really can um, can do better. I, I, I keep on saying it. I have I haven't spared the government. I've told you that I agree 
with the, the, the flamboyant lifestyle of governments, and, and I believe uh, MOK or somebody also made this, this point, we all know that more resources can be poured into the university system, that workers can be better paid if some of the wastages in governance will be reduced. I agree with that. But I'm also saying that, I mean, workers must be prepared to also make sacrifices. When we negotiate, when we reach a level where government says, okay, this is how far we can go. Let us accept that for now. I mean, um, the, it's what would the, 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 uh, the labor, one of the conditions of the, I mean, the agreements between government and the uh, workers is that there will be periodic review of, uh, of uh, wages. Uh, rather sadly, that had not been done um, religiously as would be expected. One expects government to do that. Um, the, so, uh, so, Dr. Uncombe, it's not that when, when you are in government, you now, you are faced with the reality of the situation. I mean, you are the cabinet meeting, um, they, 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 they narrate, I mean, you, they, all the pictures are now with you. So if, if you had gone there to, to I mean, protect uh, the interests of the health sector workers, by the time you are then confronted with the, the need of other sectors, I mean, you are bound to adjust your, um, your, your, your thinking and your request. Olushola Johnson, workers not being properly paid, well, um, I, I I know because I I know my own uh, pension is inadequate for me, particularly when I have to provide uh, most infrastructural facilities that I should have taken for granted. So I agree, but then um, I'm a pragmatist. I'm saying that what we have now we should hold. Um, and uh, rather than ask for something that cannot be sustained, whatever is, uh, I mean, like, let's take, go back to this issue of minimum wage. There is no need that there is, uh, I mean, there is no doubt that there is need for a review of the minimum wage. But if you look at this, the, 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 the reality of the situation, even that minimum wage now, half of the, um, the, 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 the governments cannot pay or are, are not uh, are not willing to pay, then you you, you have uh, you, you know what I'm what I'm talking about. Uh, fiscal pol policy wrong. Agreed. I've emphasized that um, too much of the national resources. If you look at the percentages, uh, I mean, at, uh, at which the national I mean, resources have been allocated. More than 50% goes to the federal government, uh, 36 governments that, uh, I mean, have about 30 something, and then you have about 50% for, for local government or so. Where I think that is, uh, everybody has said several, I mean, several people have said that several times, that that is uh, lopsided. More should go to the states and the local governments, because these are the ones that are closer to governments. And several of the responsibilities that the federal government are taking upon itself it has no business doing them. They should be uh, devoured to the states and the local government, and consequently, the resources should also be devolved to them. Uh, funding not a problem, but judicious allocation. Well, I agree with you. Um, uh, if the funding, um, if, if what we have is judiciously allocated, along the line that I have suggested earlier, and several people have also suggested uh, on several locations, um, our country will be better um, administered, the various sectors will be better funded than they are at the moment, uh, which uh, causes the problem that we have. MOK, government should not allow itself to be stampeded. Uh, yes. Um, but you see, I'm, I'm talking from experience that in the past, that's what happened because, look, the negotiations, look at the various, uh, the health and the uh, resident doctors and the ASU, look at the period they've negotiated. And you will have expected that by now, they will have come to some conclusion, but uh, they haven't been able to do that. 
um, the union took something, they said they were going to tell their members, they got to their members, maybe the members were not receptive to what they brought back, and the strike is still on. And for how long can it, can it go? That's the issue. Um, I've already, already addressed the issue of uh, periodic review of salaries. Yes. Uh, that is uh, desirable. All right, let's... Uh... Um, yes, yeah, some of them don't uh, relate to the issue we are discussing, but uh, um, it's not government that is insisting on shutting down the universities. Um, it was Professor uh, Wale Shoinka that was reported to have suggested that as a way of uh, bringing some sanity. Well, um, and uh, I said that it's a possibility, but we should not allow our situation to generate to degenerate to, to that stage and then i suggested that government should um be more responsible to i mean for his responsibilities he should um respond to demands for better funding of the universities and i'm asking the unions to be pragmatic to be realistic in their own demands that they must not insist in having everything that they always demand uh, because that may not be possible. Um, uh, Popola or border unions into regions, well, if that would help to solve a problem, um, yes, I'll support it. And part of the thing that I said really is that you cannot, there is over centralization of administration in this country. Everything. Um, I mean, once uh, they, they, they pipe in, uh, in Abuja, then they expect uh, everybody uh, in Eket, in, uh, in, in Panshi, in uh, Kaura Namoda, in, uh, in my village, to be, to be dancing. So um, we are not running a unitary system of government. And the sooner we, 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 we solve that political problem of restructuring of this country, Let's 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 go back to regionalism if need be. Let's let's uh, let each state be able to determine how much it can pay its workers. You will have a general benchmark. I I, I attended the university in the U.S. in the seventies, and I was surprised that in the same department, the professors in that the same department were not earning the same salary. And when I tried to find out what was I mean, and the, 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 the senior academic I spoke to said, well, I told you, look, Professor Johnson brings in millions of extra dollars, you know, from his research activity. So you don't expect him to earn the same salary as I do. I mean, uh, that, that, that was something um, to learn from. So uh, there is, the, um, then somebody said, yes, as we, in fact, uh, should be clamoring for restructuring well, I'm sure if ASU has not joined that demand, it should do so. It should request for less, uh, I mean, the overhead on the political system is too heavy. It's too heavy. We don't need it. I mean, and if we derobe, if, if we prune down our expenses on our political system, then we'll have more funds that we can put on our various uh, uh, sectors uh, to improve their various activities. Thank you. To pick in more calls and. I will say, my brother. Good morning, sir. Thank you, sir. Is it the sister involved in Good Samaritan? My brother. Well, I don't know about Good Samaritan, sir, but I'm sure to involve. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your views. I am Taiwan. I am going to stop for now. Thank you, sir. Yes. The presidential system of government. Mr. Pazuki now. I have said this. Is the one causing the problem for us. So much money is being pumped in the super, super legislation. And I mean, it's 25% of the budget of Nigeria. We don't need this to this 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 
go by the way of West Minister this thing. This is what is causing our problem. Then back to the strike. We are in the center. We now. The last, in the last dispensation, we knew what they did. The new test is set. Cause all this problem for us. After they were there, when the customs were going on, they didn't see anything. And this government that is now here is still uh, struggling to put the economy back. Why can't they be patient? This government is just over two years. And President Buhai, God bless him, not keep him alive for us. He's trying to restructure and to put things back in shape. Why can't we be patient for God's sake? Then our policies deep put into this thing. God bless you too. Thank you very much. Let's take uh, just one more call. One more. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hello. Sorry. Good morning. Sorry, sorry. sorry. We'll be able to with the call. All right, let's add some messages and comments. Uh, this one says, in labor relations, we will be going around in circles until we restructure government and governance in Nigeria. We copied presidential system from America and domesticated it with high level of greed, roguery, to the detriment of the country and the populace. That is bound to be agitation galore. Alhaji Badru, WA, sent in that one. And this comment was also posted by Zamani from Funab on our Facebook page. Shutting down Nigeria varsities for a year is not a solution to Nigeria's institutional problems. What about the case of Lautech, which has been shut down for the past one year now, and still no solution in sight for the school, uh, for the school's problem? So what I think should be done is restructuring of the Nigerian varsities, and they should just scrap all the universities in Nigeria. Okay, that's a very drastic one being proposed there. Uh, we, we have some tweets here tweet. too. Okay. Right, this it. came from Nawal. Funny, Dr. Ukong asking, or Dr. Ukong asking why people changed when appointed. He's in the best position. A mm -hmm. uh, case study with his position on Mapoli, little portfolio he got. And regardless from Yamida Vinci, those who fail to prepare, prepare to fail. Okay, why would government sign an agreement it can't fulfill with labor unions? Shame. I still coming from Yamida Vinci. No certain nation has universities owned by federal government. So people have said we should privatize them. Do you agree, sir? Mm -hmm. And Ulua Busayo tweeted, Asus should know the demanding for more funds now will eat more into the capital expenditure, which is not in the general interest of the nation. And we got this one from Yamida Vinci. Maybe states should be given rights of first refusal to purchase the federal universities as part of restructuring Nigeria needs. And still from Yamida Vinci, I must appreciate Asu for giving this government at least two years before they ask for what they really is their right. All right, those are the tweets here. All right, Doctor. Well, um, thank you very much. Yinka um, Deda strike selfishness. Uh, strike should not come now during the session where um, I won't say selfishness um, workers have the right to ask for betterment of their welfare uh, if you say the timing well, yes but then they will they will tell you when is it when is it right uh, students uh, not serious they should uh, well, at the moment in, in their studies well I won't say all of them maybe uh, most of them that uh, if our students uh, should occupy Senate and demand for um, reduction in uh, the resources being uh, aggregated uh, to the center. I agree with you. I have emphasized that earlier. Uh, Taiwan, your body, presidential system of government, our being, well, opt for a parliamentary system that has been suggested um, uh, by some other people, but whether presidential or uh, parliamentary, what is important is, are we ready to make sacrifices for this country? Um, but I agree with you that we could reduce cost of governance tremendously if we get away with this uh, presidential system. 
uh, strike should not be now again because of recession, particularly uh, having regards to a lot of looting that preceded uh, the emergence of this present government. Well, um, yes, uh, I, I think that's also some point that you made there. Um, Malaji Badru, restructuring Nigeria again, I started from there and I'm emphasizing it again until we do away with this um, unitary unit system. system of government that we are running, um, we are not likely to get it right. Uh, Zamani, shuttling down, no solution, um, restructuring, yeah, restructuring um, of the university, I don't even know that's not what that means, but I agree with you that uh, shutting down is no solution. I my, what I emphasize in all my presentation is that we should avoid that kind of situation. Because it could happen. Because what it could happen. Well, workers should be uh, pragmatic, um, they should be realistic in their demands, and government must be responsible enough that the moment they commit themselves, they should, they, they, well, no matter how long it takes, until the richest region we have to come to say, okay, this is what you can afford, this is what you can do, the strike will continue. But once they do, then they must then implement. And uh, I also emphasize that if both of them know the implication of being on strike, if the workers know that, I mean, governments know that if the, the systems collapse, the workers don't work, and then, I mean, they, they, our, our that is, and then let's take environment, the thing become filthy, the students cannot go to school, that there will be general public opinion against them, they wouldn't want the shutting down to happen. And if the workers know that if they go on strike, for as long as they go on strike, they will not get paid, they will be more realistic in whatever demands that they are making. Um, they, they, these are some of the issues that I believe I have been uh, emphasizing. Thank you very much. All those who called, all those who sent messages, who posted comments on our Facebook page, and those who tweeted, we appreciate your contributions. And to you, I stand the listener. We are sat down quietly and listening to the show. We appreciate you. Join us again tomorrow for the Thursday edition of the show. Thank you very much, Dr. Matayoshi Tunibu. We appreciate your contributions this morning. Thank you very much, Toby. That's our show this morning. Join us again tomorrow. I am Toby Joseph. And I